BRB UK. Worst teeth, better accents. Hello and welcome to episode 509 of BRB UK. I am Coleman. Hi. And with me this week, I don't have a Tim, I don't have a Dan, because would you believe it, it's EGX week, so we're not actually recording it on normal time, there is no availability, Tim's off doing Tabletop Tuesday, Dan's off doing Dan things, work, let's say it's work. Saving lives. So with let's me this week, yes, seems heroic. Uh, returning friends of the show, we'll start with you, Ed. Here's the story of a man named Coleman, who didn't have room yep. for any more guests. So he put on me and Bleasy, and you can guess the rest. Well, bury the lead. Uh, and we've also got Josh Bleas. I'm so shocked. But also, some call uh, him Bleasy, some call him Josh. Dan doesn't call me anything because he runs. I think you've done one podcast with Dan. I have you? never done a podcast with Dan. I the only had this time I've spoken to him is on one Destiny raid. <laughs> he avoids me like the plague. To or be maybe fair, I, I you have been have done Dan all along. I mess up one Destiny raid and he cuts me out. Good. Well, we'll have to sort that out in the future. How are you doing, fellas? Let's start with you, Ed. What are you up to? I'm very, very busy. We had Nintendo Direct last week and then TGS last week. So work-wise, it's been a lot. And I don't know. What do you mean we? I don't think we've ever established what you do. We haven't, have we? I thought it was obvious from the plug at the end of the last episode. (laughs) I Uh, I do social for Square Enix stuff. So I've got a lot of campaigns to be doing, Coleman. We've got I'm trying to think of this on my head. We just released various day life. Uh, DFL Chronicle comes out this week. Next week, it's either Valkyrie, Elysium, or Star Ocean, the Divine Force. I don't actually work on those two, so it's fine for me. But I've got Harvest Stella coming up. We've got Tactics Ogre coming up. We've got Romancing Saga coming up. And in December, there's like this small thing called Crisis Core. So I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. But again, I'm not working on that. I'm excited for that. I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard of anything. Yeah, that's fair. Well, that's because it doesn't contain the word Halo or Call or Duty yeah. or Battlefield even. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I about you? I need to branch out. <laughs> what about you, Bleezy? What video games do you have coming out? Well, I, I've, been, I've been making up this video game in my head. It, it's in yeah. really early stages. It, it's called How to Move Out of My Flat. Ah, I've known that one. I've played that one many times, I think. Yeah. So currently it's all in my head. And... Uh, well, I need to actually move on Saturday, and I have packed one box. So no EGX for you? No EGX. For you. <laughs> no EGX for you. It's the hit sequel to Unpacking that you've never asked for, Repacking. <laughs> if we have any listeners also attending EGX, uh, damn it, Coleman on Twitter or on our Discord, uh, you can you can find me. I'll, I'll be available. I'll be there to hang out. I think I'm the only one at BRB going. And don't talk to me on Saturday. Possibly, Tim. I can't be bothered. I mean, I would totally go, but I just didn't know it was happening. That's fair enough. Right, chaps, as we like to start the show these days, we like to talk about the games we done played, and I see you've got a few on here, Bleezy, and I know you want to talk about Battlefield, but I'm not going to let you. So let's hear about Formula One. (laughs) It still exists. Uh, Formula One Manager 2022, which we've spoken about on the show before. We got early impressions from Dan, but unfortunately, the word Destiny does not appear in that title anywhere, so we only get uh, early impressions of any games that do, do not contain the word destiny so uh let's let's get your impressions of uh, formula one manager 2022 so it's a game that's good good start strong start i like yeah, it yeah i know it, it doesn't involve guns so i'm really branching out I'm, I'm like pushing the envelope i've actually never played a manager game before so there were a lot of mistakes made mainly uh my the management race, part I, yeah the management part uh i had both of my cars crash into each other on the first turn of the first race i did that was uh, a learning curve Basically, you can't tell them both to try and overtake each other on the first turn. <laughs> Bad idea. Yeah, it's it's been it's pretty good. I um I kind of picked it up as a bit of a whim kind of thing, and uh, there's there's kind of a steep learning curve, but it does it like it handholds you to a certain extent, but like it doesn't really tell you all the like you know the car setup and stuff. And so for the first couple of races, I was kind of just letting it do it automatically, and now I've started actually diving in, and I'm like, oh, this makes quite a big difference in terms of like where your car qualifies because it was like i was always qualifying 10th and i was like oh that's good but it's not great and then in the race i'd somehow get up to like fifth but then actually if i tune the setup in qualifying i can actually get to third in qualifying which means i can then win the race 
And it's a, it's a whole thing. And then also I went bankrupt in the first year. Okay. So do you do that thing of once you've got your head around what you're going to be doing, then it's time to restart the game with a, a much fresher perspective? Because I'm finding myself doing that a lot lately with games that I don't fully understand going in. I, I didn't do that until I went bankrupt and then uh, the, got the forced. board <laughs> fired me. So I, I had to kind of restart somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the, the second playthrough is going a lot better. I, uh, I'm currently world champion, and I don't really know where I go from there. So. Well, then you defend, don't you? Well, Mercedes were the constructors champions for eight years in a row, so you've just got to beat that record now. <laughs> there you go. Challenge is set. I just, I don't know. I've, I feel like I've, I've cracked the code, as in, you know, my drivers mostly don't crash anymore. And, uh, and since then, I'm just like, you know, I've, I feel like I've had my fun. I might step off it. I might take a break and come back, you know, just when I've forgotten everything so I can essentially tank my own rating so I get to start all over again. Take some space and check the Battlefield 40, uh, 2042 still exists. Exactly. It, it currently does. I checked earlier Good, today. good. That's uh, good. It does take a while to find a match. Um, but like, yeah, so... Um, I think the the main uh, staying point that I had with F1 Manager was like, it really is, once it grabs you and you start to kind of understand the mechanics, it really is a, oh, I'll just do one more race. I'll just do one more race. I can turn it around. I'll just do one more race. And then next thing you know, in like one evening, you've done half a season and uh, things aren't improving. And you're like, okay, maybe I do need to sleep. Just out of interest, what team are you managing in the game? Like, do you create uh, your McLaren. own? Oh, McLaren. Oh. It's a good choice. Uh, no, so um, I don't, I don't think, think the you can create your own team. Oh, you can't create your own team. <laughs> uh, I, okay, so it's not like F1 I don't think games. so. It's not like the F1 2022 where you've got like the white team. No, so okay. I think I had F1 2021. I can't remember. One, one of the other ones, and yeah. I did the uh, create a team mode. Yeah. Uh, but this is, this is more you pick a team, and basically you pick up where, it, where they were at the beginning of this season. So, like... Mercedes is not as good as the Red Bulls and the Ferraris, but like McLaren is worse than the Mercedes and all that stuff. And yeah, consider like and then you kind of build from there. Team at the moment, you've done really well to be world champion. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I did. It did take me several seasons to get there. It did. It wasn't the one season thing. I have literally been playing it like quite nonstop. Um, I think it took me three seasons, uh, but the goal was to do it in five. So. You know, I, I also learned that there was a there's a there's a cheeky tip. <laughs> if if one of your drivers crashes and say you didn't want to deal with the driver crashing, if you close the game immediately, it resets to the beginning of the race. <laughs> and there was there was quite a few times where um, uh, my second driver would crash on the last lap because I told him to push on tires that maybe weren't you know there anymore, and uh, and then me. <laughs> I basically got to hit Xbox button, scroll down to quit so quickly. I've got that like in my. Uh, it's the uh, muscle memory. it's the analogs. It's the analog save scumming. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like Ferrari going to be phoning you up to be their strategist any time now. So, uh, I, I'm actually overqualified. Yeah, uh, because I think you know, I think I you can like... literally a Kermit the Muppet, <laughs> like Kermit the Frog Muppet, without any, any hand up it, you'd be a better strategist than the one they've got at the moment. So. Yeah, I, I understand oh, that high know, price. the tires are bad is is just a thing. Like you can't undo it by going, maybe if we pretend they're good, they won't be. Okay. Well, is that a recommend from you then, please? I, I, I really would recommend it. Like I said, I feel like I may have overplayed it at this point and I need a break. But um yeah, no, nah, it, it's really quite fun and I can't remember exactly how much I picked it up for, but it wasn't like full price and it was really worth the price that it was. Yeah. I've, I think got, it was like I've got a couple of questions 40? for you, if that's all right, because I've been quite interested sure. in this game as well. Because is it what drivers did I pick? Because uh, I, okay, I, that, that, I, that's a I hired question. and fired a couple, yeah, that's a <laughs> and question. that's how I went bankrupt. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh well, that's what McLaren have recently done with hiring and firing random drivers. So I think you're fine there. I think you are Zach Brown. It was very <laughs> strange. The decisions I made mirrored true life quite a lot. No, so basically, it's one of those things where. Um, I used to play like there was a really old Grand Prix manager sim that was like dated around like 95 ish, I think, that I played like hundreds of hours of when I was younger. Uh, I was just going to ask, like, in terms of features and stuff like that, is it just you do you do like testing and stuff like that? Do you develop all the parts or is it just like you go to the races, you set up the 
cars and then you let them go. No, no. You, in between, you have like sponsor events and you do research, you design stuff you have to upkeep your facility as well. So like there's a load of different parts of your facility, like the factory, the wind tunnel, all this stuff, and they will degrade over time as well. So, you know, if your if your wind tunnel is only at 60% efficiency, your parts aren't going to be as good as if you pay the money to refurbish it and then it goes back up to 100%. And so your stats are all affected and everything. All right. And uh, so one thing I was trying to do was I was trying to build up my factory because I kept finding that my drivers would crash and I wouldn't have enough front wings and parts and stuff. So I was trying to build up, up that, which meant I had to save quite a lot of money to upgrade the factory, which then meant that my uh, my like team facilities went in decline for quite a bit because I was trying to sit, save the money to put it elsewhere and it's kind of this balance. And then in the end, it got to the point where my wind tunnel was at 20% efficiency and all the parts were just... And uh, I, I went, okay, actually, I might need to pay this. Still won that year. Considering all, all the stuff that actually went quite badly for me during that year, it's a surprise that I won. Yeah. But yeah, well, that is we're a, all very impressed. I, I'm, I'm very impressed with myself. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. This, I, I literally played a game that I've never played those kind of games before, and I only messed it up catastrophically once. Yeah. The, the other question I had, if that's all right, is uh, you mentioned that you played the 2021 one with the Moi team. Would you recommend this over that if you enjoyed doing the racing yourself? Or would you, like, in terms of features, like, is it that this is the more in-depth one, or is it that they're much of a muchness? When I played the actual proper F1, I can't remember if it was 21 or 22. It's the one, not the one from this year, but the one from last. Year. To 21, yeah. I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't dive into all the technical aspect of it. It was like I would, I would research parts just because I'd be like, oh, yeah, front wing makes me go faster or rear wing gives me more downforce. But I didn't really go into the nitty gritty stats of it. The stat kind of tracking and all that stuff is the... This is the first game I've done it with, so I really couldn't compare them. Kind of miss the actual racing, though, because like during the races, your, your main options are managing tires, managing DRS, and sorry, not DRS, the, uh, the overtake battery, and uh, the fuel load. And it kind of becomes this whole thing of like, oh, you know, if I push for a couple laps, I'll actually lose out on how much fuel I have towards the end of the race. So... I can't push for too long because then my driver runs out of fuel and just stops in the track. And um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of that you'll see bits because it, it's very good in the presentation because it's like set up like the actual cameras you'd see on an F1 track. Like you've got the cameras on your cars or you can jump to essentially what looks like an F1 broadcast. But then there'll be like these really heated battles. And when those are going on, I'm kind of like, Kind of wish I was actually in the car, though. Like, I ha I can go to the camera on the car, but I wish I was in control. I wish I was taking part in this. But then, you know, there's some absolutely very cinematic, very F1 moments that happen just quite naturally. Nothing to do with my awful strategy, but, like, you know, a car can crash into, a, you know, three other cars and cause a safety car, and then I'm like, that's exactly what I needed because now I can manage my fuel load a bit more and... I can make these tires last a little bit longer. And so, yeah, I really got into that kind of like balancing act. I might, I might pick this Right. Up. We got to move on to, we got to move on to another game. And Ed, I'm going to let you go because uh, I think one each sounds right. Yeah. And you've been. What you, do you mean? What about what, my secret third one? <laughs> you don't have a secret third one. You've been watching videos. That's not even a thing. I just figured you you'd want me to represent the Modern Warfare 2 beta. I watched the trailer what? for it. <laughs> Well done. It's a game. <laughs> you, you can't put in watching videos as, as playing a game. What do you think this is? Geek speak? I did my research. The, the only videos I want to discuss that are about video games are Tim Rogers' action button reviews. If anyone else has seen the six-hour Tokimeki Memorial review, please talk to me. I need someone else to talk to about that. I know you just said words, but I don't know what they were. It's okay. I'm not sure Ed knows at this point. <laughs> right. Anymore. Lost Judgment. This is a spin-off of, or not a spin-off, but spiritual successor to Yakuza. Is that right? Yeah, I think you're right with both. So basically a few years back, they sort of went with Yakuza Like a Dragon. They changed that to turn-based combat. So like a JRPG. But because people still liked all the action stuff, they went, okay, well, we'll do a side story set in the same area but with a completely different character. And it's so you play um, Yagami, who is a lawyer turned detective. 
and you basically help like solve crimes and help right wrongs. And Lost Judgment is basically a sequel set a few years later. It's actually set after the events of Yakuza Like a Dragon, so which also spoils pretty much everything from Yakuza 0 to 6. And like the first minute or two of Lost Judgment spoils pretty much nearly all of Yakuza Like a Dragon. So buyers beware when you're going in. But basically it's set in... The, it starts off someone's being arrested for a crime that they've been caught on camera committing. But as they are in on trial, they admit to murdering someone else and they are on camera murdering that person at the same time. And you basically have to figure out what on earth is going on. And a lot of it is sort of centered around like bullying in Japan and like social media and stuff like that. It's very good. I mean, I finished it last week in preparation for the RGG stream because they were announcing a bunch of new games and I thought they might be announcing a Judgment 3 but they did not. They and did then not. I also jumped on the DLC called The Kaito Files, which is set after the events of Lost Judgment, but basically your main sidekick in those two games is a guy called Kaito, who's a former Yakuza. He's a, he wears very, very garish suits, uh, or very garish shirts, rather. And the DLC is basically the story of, like, a man comes into the office and he sort of says, I need you to help find this woman for me. It turns out it's Kaito's like long lost girlfriend who he hasn't seen in 14 years. And then all of a sudden, like this teenager shows up and he's like, hi, I might be your son. And you basically have to set out to find Kaito's long lost love. And it's a much shorter adventure. It's about 10 hours. So Lost Judgment took me about 60 hours. Kaito files took me about nine. It's very sort of like quick, but... Um, I have a friend who said that... Oh, these short release games. Yeah. You're just not getting the bang for your buck these no, days. It's, it's I have a really, question. really good. Oh, yeah, please. You're ready. <laughs> please. Uh, what kind of game is it? Because I've never played any of these. <laughs> oh, so um, they're essentially like action RPGs in the sense of you all sort of like run around the location. So it's nearly always set in Kamurocho, which is based on Kabuchiko in Japan. And basically you do quests for people. People try and fight you on the streets. And there'll also be like weird sub stories that usually teach you things about like Japanese culture. So for example, it'll be like, oh, can you help me do this? Because in Japan, we have to do this. And it will nearly always be weird things like, um, you know, help me, like my comedy partners disappeared and I need you to help me be a straight man in my comedy act. Or there's incredibly weird ones like in Lost Judgment, there is a man who's like, I was in a store and someone stole all my clothes and I'm covered in bubbles. Please help me get to a store to buy new clothes. And if I touch anyone, all the bubbles will come off me and I'll be arrested for indecent exposure. So you have to help me, please. Like, But they're all very wacky and weird. The main thing Lost Judgment does is a lot of the side stories are based around a school that you you help basically run the mystery club. And you have to find out the mysteries in the different clubs. So you can start doing like robotics and you can do robot wars. You can find out what's going on in the motorcycle, mo- uh, motorcycle club and start doing like death races. You can join the dance club and start doing like dance routines. And beneath them all, there's like all these different mysteries that you have to unlock and solve. They're very fun. The Kaito Files does is that, the best one. Does it play like traditional kind of Yakuza then? Yeah, it's a lot more polished and refined than traditional Yakuza. Like it's, I'd say okay. it's closest to Yakuza 0 in terms of you have multiple fighting styles for the character. You get... Where Yakuza Zero, you would like beat people up and like depending on like what tricks you did in battle, you'd get more money that you could then use to funnel into better attacks or better stats. In Lost Judgment, it does the same thing where it goes, rather than money, it goes, right, well, you did this move, you did this sort of technique, therefore you get more uh, special points to use on opponents so that you can invest them into more stats. So you're basically encouraged to play like a bit more strategically rather than just hammering buttons. But it's very, very good. And the Kaito Files especially, okay. even though I said it was shorter, the story is a lot more self-contained. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot less obsessed with twists. It's just a very well-told story that I got a bit teary-eyed at the end because it all just came together so beautifully. And then I sort of realized, oh no, they might not ever be making another Judgment game because they announced the next spin-off and it's not that. So, and we'll we'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, it, I I know you're a big fan of these games and this series, uh, like the whole 
array of of Yakuza type titles. Which I th- haven't they just dropped the name Yakuza and changed it to Lost Legacy? No, they changed it to Like a Dragon. Or Like a Dragon? No, it's yeah. Like a Dragon. That's it. Yeah, because in Very Japan confusing. it was always called Like a Dragon, but we call it Yakuza over here, and so they okay. changed it so that they don't have to keep changing the name. Because, I mean, technically, in the Yakuza games, you very Final rarely, Fantasy all over again. You very rarely play Yakuza uh, people from the Yakuza anyway. Like, okay. I mean, I I always really want to... I, I really want to like Yakuza, and I have tried, and I, I will try to go back to it, but there's so many again. games that I'm playing. Ishin is out in I February. Like. I will. Have time. <laughs> oh, so, I don't have time. Someone told me to play them a while back, but didn't really explain what kind of games they were. Oh. They were like, oh, but it's on the, uh, the free tier of... PlayStation Plus or like the yeah. base tier. Thing. Yeah, yeah, they're just and chucked then, on zero. Yeah, and I, I and a couple have of others. That, so I didn't manage to pick that up. Are, aren't they on Game Pass again? Yeah, I they're, they're on, on yeah, both they're, now. They're on Game Pass, I believe. They're also okay. yeah. So you can you could try out uh, uh, Yakuza Zero. Yakuza yeah, Zero is like the that. best is one. The, uh, it's the best one to start with. The best way to do it yeah. is in chronological order, because even though I'm actually making a note of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a weird one because like Zero is really okay. good, Kiwami is really good, Kiwami Two is incredible. Three, four, five are all PlayStation Three games that are now on PlayStation Four and Xbox and PC, but they're just upresed and they've changed some of the translations. And then Six is phenomenal. Like Yakuza, like a Dragon's phenomenal. Judgment's great. Lost Judgment, Kaito Files, but yeah, it's basically do it chronologically, zero onwards. And if you don't have any of those, zero usually goes down to like 330, 374 in Steam cells. And it's like an eight, it, it, could, it took me 80 hours, I think, to do nearly everything in the episode <laughs> zero. So it's a good bang for your buck. Also, one of the sorry, best games 80 ever hours. Made. 80 hours, 80 yeah. zero. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't but think I have that. The that was me doing that everything. Anything anymore. That was me doing everything. That's, uh, that's a completionist run. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you do yeah, just I, the story, um, it's like thirty hours, I think. Okay, so it says like a dragon is on game. Like a dragon is the uh, that's the yeah yeah that will spoil everything from <laughs> zero to six. <laughs> I, I, I feel like considering that appears to be the only option, that might be where I try it from. That, that's fair. <laughs> a lot of people do because it's the most different one. So, but it's not anything like the rest of them because that's the one that's a straight up JRPG inspired by Dragon Quest. So I'll I'll, I'll spam your inbox and just be like. So can you explain this and this and this and this? And Genuinely, what I would is a Yakuza? more than happy to. I love nothing more dragon? than talking about Yakuza games. Well, Like a Dragon is the one I really want to play, but I don't want to do it without playing the ones that come before it. Which is <laughs> so I'm kind of decision. put myself in a corner. <laughs> I know. Anywho, uh, right, I'm going to jump over to my game Please. because I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it a few times on this show, but my favourite game of all time is the uh, Monkey Island 2 LeChuck's Revenge. And now there is, um, if you did not know, uh, uh, Secret of Monkey Island was a point and click title uh, back in the 90s, or it might have even came out in the late 80s. I think 80s, it was late but 80s for both. From uh, LucasArts, which was the spin off of Lucasfilm to make video games. And it captured a, a young Coleman's uh, imagination, and they've been making sequels for that game. And it's gone from being a LucasArts game for three titles, and there are, actually, I think four titles, and then it went off to Telltale when Telltale was a new uh, new studio, and it's kind of disappeared from there, although it's had the cheeky nod here and there over in uh, Star Wars games and Uncharted 4 recently, I think, the most recent uh, mentioned in a different game. And now we've got a brand new uh, sequel to the game, which is a sequel in the sense of everything from LucasArts and Telltale and everything else, like that is all canonical. However, I don't think it takes place after those sequels. It kind of takes place in between two and three or three and four. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to kind of tell at the moment because I don't have a great memory of Beyond 2 because I've played one and two to death and I've only played the others once. I and, appreciate uh, the history while lesson ago. for me. Um, yeah. Y- You've lost me now. <laughs> That's fair enough. There's a new, basically all you need to know is there's a new game called Return to Monkey Island. It's from Ron Gilbert, who is one of the original creators of the game and his studio. Takes place somewhere in between sequels, although it does explain the the other sequels and stuff. And it's a point and click adventure game that has a big emphasis on pirates and comedy. And uh, it's one of you know, it's, again, it's one of my favorite series. And this is probably one of my game of the years so far. I've been so looking forward to this, even though 
when they first announced it, like the original game is a very, it's a pixel art style, which, you know, one that I've always fallen in love with the style of that game. Then it kind of changed to a hand-drawn cartoon style. Then that moved up, well, it looked more like a flash animation, but it was the idea at the time. Then that moved on to, uh, to, to 3D and it kind of kept that style going forward. Now we've gone to what looks like, it looks like hand-painted components that have then been computer animated, kind of like a, a more elaborate version of South Park animation, which when I looked at it and everyone's got weird proportion faces and bodies and things, it's much more cartoony than, than I'm, I'm, I'm usually a fan of with these games. Uh, when I saw the original art style, along with a lot of people, a lot of fans of the games, I went, I do, I, I'm really excited for a sequel, but I do not like that art style. Once I've actually started playing the game and I see it all in motion, it's like, wow, this is actually really gorgeous when you when you uh, get down with it. So I'm I'm really enjoying the game. Um, still playing as the titular uh, the titular character. Still playing as the main character, Guybrush Freakwood, along his adventures. You revisit a lot of the original locations. Like you start off in. Uh, I don't want to spoil the prologue because I love the prologue do, do to that game. Uh, I, I was going to say, the no, you character, don't. You play Monkey Island. Do you have to? Yes, you play. I was thinking. You say, you yeah, I accidentally sure said titular. Get lost on the way to you. I was going. I was going to ask a question about the prologue because my understanding was that it takes place immediately after the events of two. Yes, kind of. Right, and I, I I can't really explain without ruining the intro. And I love the okay, intro. If you're don't, a fan of the games, I'm going to play this. Yeah. <laughs> But after the prologue, it goes back to Millie Island uh, with a lot Millie of those, Island. like the, yeah. It's Melee Island. From the secret. Everyone says Melee in that game. So Melee Island. Melee Island. It's, it's a <laughs> Guys, it's rough taste. Up. Monkey. It's a rough it's right taste. <laughs> but the, the main quest of the game, and it's, it, it's one that I really liked the name of. So the, the very first game is called The Secret of Monkey Island. But. It's a silly title because you never actually find out what the secret of Monkey Island is. So this is about you trying to find out what is the secret of Monkey Island, uh, which is a good a good way to to start off that game. I thought after so many years, um, but yeah, point click style, voice acted, really well done, very funny, very enjoyable. Probably going to be, if not my my main, but one of my games of the year. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. You can get it on PC and Switch at the moment oh, as so timed exclusives. As well. And then it's, yeah, it came to PC the same day as Switch. I think it's coming to the other consoles later in the year. Uh, but at the moment, Switch and PC is the way to go. I'm playing on PC. Really like the, the, the smooth animation style, how it all flows together. It's definitely a recommend for me. I think it's about £22. And totally worth it. Yes, Ed, you have a question. I have a question. I can see your hand, um, which doesn't work in an audio format. How much have you format. played and have you finished it already? I am coming up to chapter two. I have not completed all the way through because I only started playing yesterday. It came out like six in the evening and I was very, very tired. That's so I didn't fair. get much gameplay and I had stuff to do. But I've, I've played some more today uh, in my lunch break. Yes, Bleasy, you you have a quite hand up too, which again, does not work with the format of this podcast. <laughs> You, you said it's a point and click, and uh, yes. how, how is that different from me watching the Modern Warfare 2 beta trailer? Because I played a game and you watched a video <laughs> of a game being played. You're not talking about the damn trailer. I'll give you this, Bleezy. Are you excited for Modern War Warfare 2? Oh, no, I only watched one minute of the trailer. I need to see a bit more of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why you Anywho. Right. Uh, once again, we are recording way earlier in the week than we usually do. So uh, the point, I mean, the show's still going to come out on the normal time. So if there's something huge that's happened and we've missed it, that is why. But a couple of things did happen before we started recording that we've got to talk about. Do you want to just about. do some shock reactions first? Yeah. Just be like, oh, I can't believe that happened. And then you just add it in later. No, we'll just play okay. a sound effect of Tim and he will go. Ah! And basically, it's like he's here. That's all you need, really. Those two things. I can't believe he walked into your room just to say that. Also, sorry, I had one more question about the Monkey Island thing. Oh, yes, go on. I, I thought it was revealed in Escape from Monkey Island that the secret of Monkey Island was that there was a giant mechanical monkey that you could use to do monkey combat. No, that's not the secret. That's just a no. mech. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, at the end of Escape from Monkey Island, the evil billionaire Ozzy Mandrill, who is based on Rupert Murdoch, is trying to use the ultimate insult to destroy Pirate Kind. So you get into a giant mechanical monkey that has been hidden on Monkey Island this entire time and you use it to fight him in monkey combat. I think that sentence gave me a headache. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, the, I'm not a big fan of the fourth one. It's, it's not the best. <laughs> it's very one. weird. I, I'm a very controversial fan. I think three is probably one of the best ones. I love that one. We've got some headlines to run through, and the big story, it's probably covered to death at the point this podcast comes out, but uh, Grand Theft Auto 6, it is a game we know is in development. If you're a child, then you probably think that Grand Theft Auto is just Grand Theft Auto 5, because at this point, it's existed for a billion years. But there is a Grand Theft Auto 6 in development. It is... Uh, uh, from Rockstar, normal studio, different team because, you know, heads have left and there's been change-ups and things that are happening behind the scenes. And a lot of people are very ravenous for any kind of information or footage we can get about this. We had a leak recently about information of a, a female character and a body and Clyde type situation in the game, and also that it's going to take place in Vice City. And now... Due to some hacks, there has been information that has been leaked out in the form of over 90 videos of the game uh, running in ooh, debug. Ooh, ooh. Yes, pleasey. As our resident video watcher of the podcast, I have watched some of these. I can report live from the situation. <laughs> okay, well, I will say before any kind of comments on this that these are taken way early in development, like textures are not final, gameplay is not final, there's menus and graphs and things all over the place when you're watching these things. It's not going to be representative of anything close to the, the final game. And has been said as much from, from Rockstar and from many developers that really aren't happy when games get leaked out because it kind of ruins it for the people working on the game. And as we've seen from a lot of a lot of fans of the game that have been waiting for the, any information of it, really puts you off the final product of the game, according to a lot of people, because they see it and go, oh, it's not, looks rubbish. Textures are the first thing you work on in a game, says someone who's never made a game in their life. It's like the last thing, apart from bugs. Yeah. Some people need to go outside and touch grass textures and see how they feel. If you look at leaked footage of uh, the like The Last of Us Part 2, for instance, there are characters that are literally taken from The Last of Us and plopped in during the development mode before they've changed out the model completely or changed the textures or, or whatever. So, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those situations. Bleasy, what did you want to say? <laughs> After watching over, over 90 videos of... Oh, of, I didn't uh, watch Grand all 90. That was, that was too yes, much. I did. watched like six. Your resident uh, video watcher. <laughs> Hi Coleman, I'm here on the scene. Uh, no, uh, so I. Uh, it looks like a GTA game. It does look like a GTA game. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, it, 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 I, I watched the. Um, I think there's a diner robbery, and like you know, it's it's early build, but it looked quite interesting actually. Like some of the um, the movement looks a lot more refined than Grand Theft Auto Five. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm actually I think I might be the only one that's a little bit more hyped now that I've seen it, just because I was like. Oh yeah, it's been so long since I played the actual story of GTA V that I'm like, oh, once you get into it, it's actually like a pretty exhilarating experience. And after doing years and years and years and years of grinding on GTA Online, I'm like, oh, when it's actually structured, it's a lot more immersive. Yeah, so, yeah I'm I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I don't want to get too hyped because you know it's a why it, it's going to be a way off. Uh, like we no, it's going to be next week. Did you not see the foot? Oh, is obviously? it not? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> finished. it's finished. Those uh, those those menus are final. <laughs> that was a trailer. <laughs> no, that that's fair. Uh, Ed, did you want to add anything to that? Um, a couple of things. First of all, I recently watched the trailer for uh, you know the latest Thor film, but it was only like halfway in development. So they hadn't add, hadn't added the green screen effects yet, and it looks a bit like weird and empty, like it was on some sort of void. I don't know why anyone would watch a film like that. Like, <laughs> also, I'm going to go and touch grass and think about my life. Um, no, the thing I would say is, and I have to be careful with my words. That's here. too self-aware. Yeah, I have to be careful with my words here because I did formerly work at a subsidiary of Take Two. So the thing I would say is, is that it always incredibly sucks when people are working on something for years and years and years, and it is presented to the world when it is not ready to be viewed. And the thing that people have to keep yeah. in mind with alphas is that so many things are incomplete. So many things aren't there. It's literally the framework and the patchwork that they use to just start putting things together. Even in beta, stuff changes so much. Like there are games that I have worked on where like in beta forms, like the final form, it's so much of a difference. Warren Spector very famously said that like Deus Ex literally didn't come together until like the last two, three weeks before launch. 
And he just said it like before launch, it was outright not fun to play. And it wasn't until like the last two, three weeks, like just before it was meant to go gold, that the game became fun and playable and became what it was, which is legendary. And so the thing you have to keep in mind is that regardless of whether or not you enjoy their games, Rockstar have an incredible pedigree. And one thing that did come out from that leaked report like last month was that over the pandemic, they've really changed a lot of their culture. They've let people work from home. They've let people have like 40 day work weeks. They've really toned down on the crunch and they've let people have like a semblance of a life to develop these games. And I worry that what will happen as a result is some people may use the leaks as an excuse to bring everyone back into the studio and to work harder on the game. And so while someone who has hacked everyone is thinking, oh, I've made some money out of this, I've gotten some notoriety, what they might actually have done is really messed up several like lives. Like not in a very dramatic way, but in a way that like you don't we don't know the ramifications of what this is going to have on employees and how they're going to be like scrutinized going forward. And also as a side note, the take two lawyers are I don't know why you would ever battle with Take Two lawyers. They're the people who won the hot coffee case. If you knew how yep. unwinnable that case was from a legal perspective and how they won, you wouldn't even like attempt to begin to want to slander anyone or anything at Rockstar. Those dudes will destroy you. And those women as well. Sorry, to be inclusive, anyone who was a lawyer at Take Two is fundamentally Dude scary. Can be woman. Yeah. That's true. But I just want to yeah. say, that's all I'm going to say is that I didn't work anywhere near Rockstar for the record. I just worked as, at a subsidiary at Take-Two. But like, you don't, don't mess with those lawyers. Like, they're incredibly good at what they do. What was the game in the last couple of years that someone leaked something and then sites that reported on it were getting sued? Why would you mess with any AAA developer? Oh, <laughs> God, yeah, because it was trusted reviews, wasn't it, who got done and they had to yeah. pay like a massive fine. I don't think... I think that might have been Ubisoft. Can, can we take a quick break to yeah. check that? No, no, that's fine. Ain't no <laughs> fact checking on this show, buddy. <laughs> no, we are moving on. And I won't talk about this one just as much, but mainly because we've already seen footage from it. But there was also early Diablo 4 footage that got leaked online. There's a uh, Reddit user, iVirus0. They spotted two videos uploaded anonymously to a file sharing website. One is five minutes of Diablo 4 footage and the other is 38 minutes. So those are floating about out there. We don't know how close to the final product that will be. Once again, it is a game that is in development. It's ready when it's ready. View at your own risk. But yeah, that footage is floating out there too. And uh, something that, I wanted to talk about just I just wanted to note on it because this made me a little bit sad uh, in my in my little Coleman head and that is that we know that the PlayStation VR2 or PSVR2 is coming out next year and a lot of people like myself may have a fair few PlayStation VR games that they don't play because the PSVR is not the best bit of tech with the screen door effect and the terrible terrible move controllers and thought, hey, maybe I can play these on my new PSVR 2 headset when that comes out next year. Over on the official PlayStation podcast, the uh, SVP of platform experience, Hideki Nisho, he has confirmed that the PSVR 2 will not have any backwards compatibility with PSVR games. And this is meant to be because the, the system is more in line to port your more kind of PC VR headsets, those games over to the PlayStation. So it doesn't add a lot of parity when you've got a headset that you had to make games specially work with this headset. So because of the whole 180 scope and the special controllers and all this kind of stuff. So when you're, say, when you're making something that is more in line with other headsets, that functionality disappears, unfortunately, which is a bit annoying. I guess that means that gives them a chance, uh, developers a chance to re-release games that they've released on the PSVR, on the PSVR 2, and probably charge you a pretty penny for it. Bit sad. Not 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 great news for me, but I understand fully. Sort of skip VR because it's just not a way that I tend to enjoy my games. I think the only way I would really do VR is if I played it with the F1 games. But even then... <laughs> Even then, probably not, because the way I tend to play F1 games is I stick on a podcast and I did the full race distance. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just learning there's a PSVR too. That's fair enough. 
You really brought the top caliber of people into this. Ed, you drive. Are you really going to put on a VR headset and go, wow, it's like I'm driving? <laughs> yes, because an F1 car is different than a road car in many, many different no, ways. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's basically a Kia <laughs> with a big engine. I was going to say Renault again. Less, less uh, legroom. Home by I-10. Yeah. More boots. Got nowhere to put your shopping. Again, <laughs> Terrible shopping space. Uh, it's got where those little pods go- on the side. You just shove it, all your groceries in there. No, where are you going to put your golf clubs, Bleasy? You can't fit them in that thing. You hook it over the top. Oh, of <laughs> course. Flap about. <laughs> Mountain bike rack. Where's that going? Uh, it's literally in the back. The back bit. You just shove your bike in the little slats. You can actually take multiple. Okay, right. Moving on. Last topic we've got, and I put this in just for you, Ed. Thank make you. you happy. But the uh, the RGG Summit 2022 was upon us last week. Unfortunately, it happened as we were recording the show, so we couldn't really get into it. Um, I like to call it the Summit 2022. And this is going to be all that I just killed Bleasy <laughs> as he was taking a drink by doing a stupid joke. <laughs> I thought it was me for a second. I was like, I was going to apologize. And then it sank in that that did not come from me. As uh, as <laughs> as you alluded to earlier, Ed, these are all the games that are your your Yakuza or now like a Dragon type games. What is it you want to talk about? What is it you are looking forward to? All of them. everything. I'm everything. looking forward to everything. <laughs> you just summarised it, right? Let's move on. No, seriously. okay, great. Moving no, on. <laughs> seriously, let me talk, please. I beg you. <laughs> so the first one is they finally announced they're bringing over like a Dragonishian. So it was a. Technically a spin-off. It's set in like samurai times. The best way to describe it is, as I've been told, is it's to think of it less as a prequel to the Riga Gotoku Riga Gotoku games. Easy for you to say. Yeah. It slips off the tongue. It's less that. Like, you know how in the Muppets you had like Treasure Island and Christmas Carol, where they just retold stories that have already been told, but with characters from the Muppets. Whoa, whoa, slow down. You're going a million miles an hour with uh, Muppets here, mate. Basically, like a dragon I think, I think Ed just wants to change yeah. every game to Muppets yeah. now. Oh, I wish It's a could. new adventure with the same cast in different roles. Yeah, so... F1 it's, Manager it's 2023, like, but with Muppet Drive. It's based on like an ancient legend the, or an ancient story, but it just uses characters from the Like a Dragon series. So when the original came out in 2014, they just had characters from like 1 to 5, but since then, they've had Zero, they've had Judgment, they've had, like, Dragon. So they've, like, recast a bunch of the characters and brought back, like, their brought their voice actors in to reprise certain roles or to, like, replace certain roles. It's going to be really interesting because there's going to be, like, a load of gunplay. It's the first game in the series that uses the Unreal 4 engine instead of their uh, Dragon engine as well. And I think that's because there's quite a lot of gunplay in there, which also means that if anyone's excited about Dead Souls ever coming back in any form... Maybe this is them trying out some of the gun stuff to then bring back the Dead Souls okay. zombie game. I don't know, but it's going to be very good. And also, now that I've said the Muppet thing about the game, I just want to do, why, hello there, I'm Kazuma Kiryu, and I'm here to take down the nope. ancient Japanese order. <laughs> no, nope. um, don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. Then the second game they announced was, oh, so that's going to be February... 23rd to 2023. So if you've yet to play any 21st. Like a Dragon or Yakuza games, you have like four, four and a half months to play as many as you can. You can probably just about get through all the seat all the games in that time, maybe. Who knows? They're all on PlayStation Essentials right now for you to try out. Wink nudge. Wait, is it PlayStation Essentials? I thought it was on PlayStation Plus Premium. It's wait, which one's the second one? PlayStation Plus Essentials is the library of free games. It's not extra. free games. You get for it's extra. Yeah, because you've got so you've got PlayStation Plus. Yeah. And PlayStation Plus. Uh, it's PlayStation basic, Plus extra Essentials, premium, extra, right. and then premium but, uh, is all the PlayStation One, Two, and Three games, right? Okay. I'm so I thought, glad I'm not the only one confused by this because so it's on. This it's is on this the is why I didn't one. re-up. <laughs> if if you have PlayStation Plus and you have a PS5, they give you access to a bunch of PS4 games, uh, a little library of them, which isn't included as the the weird tier system PlayStation so Plus thing. It was like a reward for picking up a PS5 and having PlayStation Plus. I thought that was called PlayStation Plus Essentials. No, I don't know. Um, no, Essentials I, is the lowest okay. tier. Then extra is the one where you get okay. 
like 300 games. Oh, I think it's called the PlayStation Plus Collection, thinking about yes, it. Yes, you're thinking of the PlayStation Plus what Collection. What I'm thinking of. I'm pretty okay. sure I remember it saying essential. Like, I, I don't think any but I'm of just it, throwing that in to confuse everyone. None of this is making the edit. It's somewhere so it's in that, that subscription yeah. tier. It's, it's the, no, no, it's The fine. word We're essential is used it's, somewhere. It's the second subscription tier, zero... Webster's Dictionary one, defines four, essential. Five, six, and like a dragon are all in that. Uh, the second thing they announced is that in 2024, there will be like a dragon eight, which will have Ichiban Ooh. from like a dragon comeback and also Kazuma Kiryu from zero to six comeback, which is very, very interesting if you've played zero to six, because it was very much left in a way where it was implied that he was never, ever coming back ever, ever. He was gone. He's not. You're lying. No, but he's back and he's got cool dad emo hair now. So it's going to be very mm. interesting. They've announced Jealous. that it's going to be a dual protagonist game and that it's going to be turn-based, but it's coming out in about two years. So okay. I just wanted to make a note of that because I this is the one complaint I will make. I think it's very, very rude of the developers to make that game two years from now because that means that in the meantime, I have to look after my physical and mental health long enough to survive to see that day. So thanks. Then the third game that they announced was like a dragon gaiden which because they sort of went in the conference you may be surprised why kazuma kiryu is back after we said that he was never ever coming back ever so they've done gaiden which is yeah like a dragon gaiden the man who erased his name which is going to follow the story of what happened to kazuma kiryu from the end of six to the events of seven and then the events between seven and eight. So it's like right. pre-sequel and sequel and interqual, which is why they've just gone, look, it's a guide and it's set between these two, but that's going to bring back the action gameplay of zero to six. And they've said it's going to be a bit of a shorter adventure as well. So I think they said okay. something around like 20 hours for the whole experience. So about the length of this story. Yes. Yeah, yeah, about that. <laughs> Oh, if you still, and that's out you sometime to, um, in 2023, stuff. assumedly after Ishin at some point. Gaiden, yeah. Gaiden's 2023, the second half of 2023. And then eight is 2024. So Correct. I'm eating good, basically. Love that we got that. Eating good on uh, Like a Dragon games I'm that also used to be called Yakuza, now. but they're not <laughs> called Yakuza anymore. Replaying four because it's got Akiyama. He's one of the best ones. Uh, I will put a link to the Arr! Summit 2022 in our show notes. Had to do it again just to get bleasy. Right. I'm still paying attention, we, I promise. Before we get out of here, we got a couple of plugs to run. And that is, uh, we have merch over at tpublic.com slash store slash BRB. You've heard us talk about it every single damn week. So uh, go over to that link with t-shirts, mugs, masks, mouse mats. I, I don't know what we got on there anymore. But we've got loads of stuff from really cool designs, uh, including some from our uh, resident artist here, Bleasy, which I think you get a whole shiny 20 pence for each one of those that's sold. I know, right? Think of the yeah. Freddos he How many 20 pieces does... Uh, I, I think uh, uh, Tim owes you at least three 20 pence pieces now. Oh, nice. I think we're rounding up. We've got to wait for a pound before you can have your payout. Uh, I was just going to wait until he can like buy me a Freddo. <laughs> With <laughs> current inflation, like it would be three years. <laughs> exactly. One lonely Freddo. But for the record, I do actually have one of those t-shirts, Josh. You did a fantastic job. I got the uh, BRB to the Future one. It's very well done. Thank you. Ooh. I would be wearing it right now, but I am not wearing it because I didn't want to suck up to That's you. fair enough. Sorry. I mean, I, I don't own any of my own shirts. Maybe I should, and oh. then I can get more 20Ps. Yeah. <laughs> well, you should, ask, um, you should ask Tim to pay you in free versions of your shirts because <laughs> yeah that's probably more than the money we're making on <laughs> yeah you should have you thought nah. about drawing one of yourself on a t-shirt where you're wearing your own t-shirt on the t-shirt and the t-shirt is you wearing that, a t-shirt that'll be uh, use your proper what, choice next milestone 600 yeah 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 it, it, it won't be anything to do with games <laughs> it will just be me wearing my own t-shirt of me on a t-shirt that will just go into it infinite <laughs> yeah the, the proper choice like an orange castle design uh, you just drawing yourself into infinity. I like Until it. Until I get bored and then there's just a Master Chief at the middle. <laughs> I mean, there's a wrestler called Orange Cassidy and his shirt that he wears is just a picture of his face. So you could just do that. Yeah. Just walk around wearing a picture of your face, wearing some sunglasses or something. I mean, I just think 
this beauty is too much for the world to have twice. Just, just right. think about it, right? You, you make the t-shirt, you walk into the club, you've got the sunglasses on, people are looking at you, they're going, who is that beautiful man on that t-shirt? You take off the sunglasses, going like the t-shirt, they look down at the t-shirt, they look at you, it's you on the t-shirt. Yeah, you're going- But the t-shirt now has sunglasses <laughs> on instead of me. Whoa. Right, we've got to move on. Uh, <laughs> We've got to move on. Tabletop Tuesday, that is available each and every Tuesday. It's a night where what we do is we go down to the loading bar in Stoke Newington. Newing, Newingham? Uh, Newington? Newington. Newington. Not Thank on you. Trent. Spingringham. Stoke Newington. And the, uh, you go there, you turn up, you play some board games, and if you play the featured board game, you get entered into a, a little prize draw. And at the end of the night, if your name is drawn, you win that game to take home. And that's a decent prize because... From experience, some of those games cost a lot of money, so uh, you could be walking home with a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice prize with you. And all the games are always excellent. And sometimes you get special guests and things. I won't give any details because Tim didn't leave me any details. So I will just say, uh, bigredbarrel.com. It's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, bigredbarrel.com or uh, meetup.com. Uh, look for Tabletop Tuesday, and you can find information on the next event. But yes, Loading Bar, Stoke Newingham, and that's where you can find Tabletop Tuesday. Surprisingly, on a Tuesday. That's hard. No. Yes. I said, uh, as condition of you coming on to this podcast, you had a little announcement that you wanted to make and some plugs to give out. Uh, yes. So I will be running the London Marathon in two weeks. You're mad. I know. Uh, so I got a charity place running for Macmillan Cancer Support about six weeks ago. And I have. All right. You're nice. Training my little legs off. And I basically, I think I've just reached 50% of my sponsor target, which. I'm very proud of, and a big thank you to everyone that's donated, but also, if you would like to support a very good cause, they've been very helpful with my family over the last couple of years, as we've sadly lost uh, a couple people very close to me. Macmillan has been great throughout, so I'm very proud to be running for them. And I don't know if you can put the link in the show notes or anything. But yes, of course I will, mate. It will also be on my um, Twitter, so thank you very much. And uh, yeah, so if you could donate, that would be fantastic. And if you are around in London watching the London Marathon on the 2nd of October, come watch me make a fool of myself. I give myself two to one odds that I'll, I'll survive it. I have confidence that you will make it through, mate. I don't know where you'll get, but you'll... you'll, you'll... I, I mean, I'm stubborn and my sister ran it last year. So I want to beat her time. Isn't it technically if you pass the finish line in 24 hours, you, you've technically finished? No, I have eight hours to finish. <laughs> oh, eight hours I, to finish. I got an email earlier today, which would be like, you have eight hours to complete the course after your official start time. We've had I'm too like, many oh. people. We've had too many people crossing at uh, 23, <laughs> 2359. We're not having that anymore. Wait, it's just away. a normal road now. <laughs> exactly. But, no, yeah. Well done, mate. Um, but, you know, you, you, I know you'll smash it. You're, you're, you're probably the fittest one out of a lot of us, so it makes sense. I'll, I'll be honest. I, um, I... I did, I, did, I did apply for it like October last year and I didn't get in for this year's one. And so that's why the charity place is like quite last minute. But as a result, because I've kind of set myself a load of challenges, I signed up for one in April. So I was kind of getting into a very uh, gradual training program to be ready for April next year. And then they went, surprise, you want to be ready in seven weeks? And I was like, oh, no. Ah, uh, yeah. I know people that like, they train all year for that, and just regardless of if, if it's entered or not. So <laughs> if they can get through, it's ready. Yeah. Probably sensible to do that. I, I feel like this is going to be a, I do it once, and then I never do it again. Well, I'm, I'm also signed up for Brighton in April, so I'll also do it then. I'll do it there twice, and then never again. <laughs> All right, we're going to put a link to that in the show notes, but uh, there'll also be a link to uh, Bleezy's Twitter and Ned's Twitter and our, uh, in the show notes and all that stuff, so you can go and find links to uh, charities and what have you that way. Oh, also, I have a YouTube channel. I keep forgetting that it exists. I will, I will link the YouTube as well. Because uh, I, what I am planning on doing is I'm doing like little video blogs as I do all these challenges, so there is one oh, for clever. the marathon that will be coming. Uh, it will take me about six months to recover from the marathon, and then I'll start editing it, so... Don't expect it soon, but uh, yeah. That's uh, Bleasy Boy on YouTube, right? Uh, yes, there there are two accounts if you search for it. It's the one that's not the cat. The cat is my old account that I lost the password for. Well done. Uh, if you uh, send them an email, they'll shut that down for you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it'd be great to get that back. I just don't remember what the email is. Oh, there you go then. 
Yeah, I will say, uh, Please has got a really interesting editing style on videos. So, uh, it's, no, no, it's like, uh, chaotic, good. isn't it? I, I really like uh, Please's editing style. So, uh, I, check I have that a couple of videos YouTube. that I haven't remembered to put up because I've been focusing on marathon training. But yeah, there's a there's a couple coming, and I think I've still got one more uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint one that we did from like last year, and I edited it, and I've just forgotten to upload. <laughs> I've, uh, I, yeah, I've appeared in videos and also, am I still in your intro? You are the entirety of my intro. Excellent. I like, I like the, the only that. time that I ever cut it out is when I'm trying to go for like a really dramatic vibe. Something serious <laughs> and you don't want to hear, oh, I'm losing coming out Pretty of the speakers. Can we get montage music for you? You're the plea. Z boy. Nothing's going to ever keep you down. I can't do the rest of that. <laughs> Might have a copyright problem with that. I don't know. If if people want to send me alternate intros, but you are against stiff competition with Coleman. I'm pretty, yeah. Well, I made the original intro that then you went, can I just have the raw files and <laughs> I will make the intro? <laughs> well, because the original intro was all about... A oh, sorry, I can't swear, can I? Um, <laughs> it was all about a uh, pigeon. <laughs> yeah. Nice I've been so like, well uh, behaved this entire... Uh, um, it's fine. I'm pretty sure, like, the original intro is on one of the older videos on that channel <laughs> with the little blinking bird. I do like that bird. I made that in, like, 20 minutes. I was really impressed with myself. It's it's good for what it is. It's just not what I was going for. <laughs> it's it's my early video making as well. Right, uh, Ed, did you have any plugs that you, you wanted to put out, considering you've got a full schedule coming up? Considering how many games, like I said, I think Square Enix-wise, there's, like, nine games coming out between now and the end of the year. So, as mentioned last week, we released Various Daylife on Nintendo Switch, PC, and Steam. The Deerfield Chronicle is out at the end of this week. I think by the time this episode goes up, that is out. Valkyrie Elysium is out next week. Star Ocean the Divine Force is out the week after that. Triangle Strategy is available to pre-order on Steam now. If you, you can get that in a bundle with Various Daylife on Steam for a permanent 29% discount. At the end of October, I believe October 26th, there is the second Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin DLC called Wander of the Rift, which features Gilgamesh. And November 4th, Harvest Stellar releases on Steam and Nintendo Switch. There is a free demo now on Nintendo Switch that lets you play for the first 15 days of the game and you can save your progress and carry over to the final game. Tactics Ogre Reborn releases on November the 11th on PC, Steam, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. After that, Romancing Saga Minstrel Story Remastered is out on PlayStation 4, 5, Nintendo Switch, and After PC that, Steam Romancing on, the Stone. On December 1st. And then on December 13th, it's Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. And at the end of January, it is Forspoken, which it has been yours and Dan's game to watch out for for several years in the trot. It's releasing at the end of January, so you can be very happy about that. And then the final one, because we announced that at the Nintendo Direct last week, Fiat Rhythm Final Bar Line releases on PlayStation 4 and... Oh, that's the one that Blees is excited about. Nintendo Switch on December the 16th, 2023. It has over 385 songs, all from different Final well, Fantasy obviously. games. There's also a digital deluxe edition that comes with a season pass and that will have games from outside Final Fantasy. It's, it's basically... Does that include Octopath Traveler? That you can then play the music. Including Octopath Traveler and including well, near then music sold. and including Romancing Saga music. So And Romancing the Stone. Yes. Good. I like that film. Let's all just go watch that film after the show. I feel like an idiot. That's all right. You had your hand up during that, Bleasy. What did you want? <laughs> this is <laughs> no. not how we ask questions on the show. I, I fact check myself and uh, I don't want to admit what I was going to ask. That's fair enough. No, no, just uh, I got confused between uh, for, Forspoken and uh, the Destiny expansion Forsaken. Just pretend I didn't hear that. We were doing I'm so glad well. you admitted to that. <laughs> We were doing so well. You know Square Enix's destiny. <laughs> yeah, you know that destiny, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's got all your favourite destiny characters. Sephiroth, Cloud, Please. <laughs> Please. Barrett, Tifa, <laughs> If anyone K6. from my work hears this, I didn't approve this. <laughs> like, no, he didn't. Did. Like, I mean, all, all this is Bleezy's fault. Yes, this is, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but putting your hand up on a podcast is not a good way to ask a question. The best way, way to ask a question is to go over, stop it. <laughs> I can see you putting I your hands up at the corner of my eye. The best way. I have a question too. 
What's the best way to ask a question on a podcast? That is, well, that is to go to bigrebarrel.com and go to our comment section or our Discord, our Facebook at Big Re- uh, Facebook Big Red Barrel and our Twitter at Big Red Barrel or our YouTube Big Red Barrel TV and go over there and type it loud and type it proud and say, I have a question. And that is when you ask a, uh, a question. We did not ask for questions this week because uh, it was a spur of the moment idea to to do this episode uh, on a on a Tuesday, but Ed has kindly written us some questions, as he tends to do anyway, whether he's on the show or not. That's right. Go on, Ed. So the first question I wanted to ask you two kind gentlemen was with... And how are you asking that question? I have a question. Uh, with Like a Dragon Ishin arriving in February and being retelling of a classic myth with video game characters... What other classic myths or like stories would you like to see retold with game characters and which games and which characters? Oh, I would like um, Vikings and Norse mythology, but done with assassins, I reckon. That'd be quite a cool game. Someone should make that. Um, it'll never catch nah. on. Nah. I'm trying to think of a myth. Can someone throw out a myth? I, I was going to say like uh, Icarus, Knights of the but Round Master Table. Chief. I just want Master <laughs> Chief falling from the sun. Knights of the Round Table, but with Sonic Did characters. you not see the beginning of Halo 3? Anyway, Yes, um, I did. So I would say Icarus, but <laughs> the Muppets. <laughs> Why, hello there, I'm Icarus. I have these Those nice famous <laughs> video game characters. <laughs> they have appeared in video games. Fair enough. Yeah, the, Siege had that weird event where they were like knockoff Muppet skins and they were horrifying. Well, we, I hope these wax wings Ed. don't burn too close to the sun. Ed, <laughs> second question. Second question that I had for you. Question the second. Was um, with the Ria Gagotaku studio still not announcing a Majima spin off to my eternal sadness? Where is the Like a Dragon Gaiden with Majima? I've been waiting for it for so long. Anyway, with them not doing that, and to my eternal sadness, which of your favorite games are long overdue a spin off and what should they consist of? Halo needs another spin off game. Reach and ODST were some of the strongest in the franchise. Also, Bad Company 3. What, what would be the spin-off? I've got an idea for the spin-off, actually, for Halo. What, what happens is, is you are Columbo. Halo Reach 2. you have 2. to solve Halo crimes. Um, I think a really good spin-off would be... Uh, do you know the Batman Arkham games? Yeah. Yeah, so that universe, but starring the Suicide Squad. I think that would be quite a good game, but made by Rocksteady as Wait, well. Wait, I actually have a, a, a legitimately good idea. Okay. I, I would not play it because I would be too scared, but like a Halo spin-off, where you are a, just a normal marine facing off against the flood, Ooh. and it's set like like survival horror, kind of like Alien: Isolation. I pitched this years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, he's pitched it now, and it I hope it was on this show. I'm gonna look here. really stupid. Oh no, man! I I don't remember that. I just I remember think we've had I this conversation it. at an EGX. <laughs> no, 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 common. I just pitched it now. That's what you're okay. remembering. Yeah. You're remembering that time I said it 10 seconds 90% ago. 90% of Colin's editing is what it going was. to be trying to find when he said that. <laughs> and then it's just going to be put right no, at the end. I don't have end. the time to do it's that. It's going to be like Columbo's just one more if it. But no, Columbo in Halo. I want him to solve Halo crimes. Now excuse me, Arvina. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll answer for Tim because I know, I know exactly what he wants. If we could have a spin-off to Marvel's Spider-Man and uh, starring The Punisher. Ooh. There we go, Tim. I did it. You're happy now? That'd be really good. Got your Punisher mention. I, yeah. so, uh, I won't Ed, answer you, for Dan because he's not listening. I also want Halo with <laughs> no, puppets. No. Why, hello there, Mr. Chief. <laughs> no, that's not a spin-off. <laughs> yes, it is. Right. We've that's got just a, the reboot we needed. We've got to go. Ed, at what point over. do I mention... I don't know what you mean by Columbo, and you've made several references to it. Oh, he's so young. We have to win this podcast, because it's just going to be ten minutes of being cold and explaining Columbo to you. <laughs> like... No, you just need to end with just Ed just go, ah, and then just cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, uh, I'm going to look online and send you a box set of Columbo, because it is one of my favourite shows one of, of the time. I'm never giving you my made. address. Honestly, it's one of the best shows ever made. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's a detective show that's got some comedy to it, and it's uh, really engaging. And even though it's it's one of those ones where you see the murderer at the start of each episode, you're trying, you, you're following the cop trying to figure out who the murderer is, and you're along it's for the so ride. Much you just more like that fun, guy. Though. It's so much more fun. Yeah, no, it is. Re- it's like one of the only shows where I like that they do that, and it's um, it's because really it's good. just him, it's, it's just him odd. winding up people until they confess crimes. That's my entire personality. Guarantee you'd like it. Everyone likes it. Everyone I'm loves just, Columbo. I'm just imagining this thing where it's just like 
this guy just getting false confessions because they're just like, yeah, just go away. Go away. I'm so done with this. Okay, Carmen. I've got yeah, one more. Pretty much. You got the one show. More. Muppet Columbo. That's go L.A. Noir. Muppet Columbo. Go on. Why, hello there. Just one more thing. No. You did it, didn't you? No, really not liking this. <laughs> Right, we have also, to go. Also, which Muppet um, are you trying to be? I'm trying, we, I'm trying to the uh, oh, that's Gonzo. <laughs> everyone knows. I thought it was Miss Piggy. <laughs> oh, Kermy. Uh, oh, last me. thing before we go. Got to say, if you could leave us a podcast review on whatever platform you're listening to that allows you to do such things. We do receive each and every one of those. We do read them and uh, sometimes read them on the show as well. A nice five star is the thing that makes us feel warm at night, like a, a nice, warm, cuddly review blanket. That would be lovely. And it gives me some, uh, some, some comfort in not only knowing that the podcast got a review, but people are listening and enjoying. So that's, that's good to know. I mean, or you could just tell us. It's fine. Or just throw me money when you see me on the streets. Begging, but you must approach change. by going. I have a, I have a review. I have a question. <laughs> I have money. <laughs> I have some change. Come on, I have a like, question. Okay, 20 I pence of that is for Bleasy. <laughs> uh, I don't think you can. I think that's just going up and giving me a grand. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you a high five. That's how that works. Or a hug. Yeah, that, that works too. Anyway, uh, right. Bleasy, thank, thank you for coming on, Bleasy. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's, it's, Ed, it's thank been you for coming experience. on as well. Is, is that no to a little smooch? What? No, shut up. <laughs> Come on, there's just. There's but also, just thank you thing. for coming on and filling in. It's all right. No, this is, this, this one no more, more thing. things. No more things. This I've got to wrap up. Just one thank more you. thing, man. I'll be out of here. Thank you both for being infuriating. <laughs> this has been. I don't have any hair. This has been BRB UK episode five oh nine. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, enjoy EGX. If you're off to EGX, I will be there once again. Look out for me. Uh, but I will say for this week that I have been Coleman. I laughed so hard that I got an eyelash in my eye and now it's really irritating. <laughs> but I I might have been chaos. Uh, I, I've been Josh. Toodle. Oh, just one more thing, Coleman. Just one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for listening. Until <laughs> next time, dear listeners, be sure to check out the <laughs> Summit 2022 <laughs> and goodbye. Excuse me, ma'am, this is one more thing. <laughs>